This is the Sprinter Van Build Series. This is the introduction video. If you did not see the previous videos, please click in the description below and you'll see my trailer for the series. Following this video of the introduction, we will have additional 20 videos. First thing we want to do is share some of the objectives that we're going to be covering in this. And first one is I really want to share my passion of the build for the past three years, put a lot of work into this, uh, and I hope to spark some creativity in future builders or anybody that's even now looking to buy an RV. We're going to discuss some of the research that we did. Uh, we'll share the components in the build series. Our van is a work in progress and it will change as our needs change with the van and we'll get into the discussions on that because it changes constantly. So as I've said previously, we've taken over a thousand photos. We're going to create 20 chapters and those will follow this introduction section. All that will be done in a playlist. And if you look at the description section of this video, you'll see all the links as I roll them out. I will add all of the links to the videos. I've done about 95% of this build series myself. It's very, very important to note that I am not an expert. I'm not an electrician. I'm just a guy with a van that wants to share my passion of what I've done and what I've done wrong. So let's get started. I have to admit there was a lot more math and science behind this build than I had thought. I had some great ideas and sometimes the math just didn't work out. So the big question is, is where do we start? I would always say, number one, you really got to start asking yourself a lot of questions. How many passengers do you want in the van? The lengths of the trip that you're going to be taking. Are you going cross country, weekend adventures? We're more adventure people and I'll get into all that later. But do you want to be able to park this in small towns uh, when you're going to national parks? Uh, are you going to be able to park it on the side of the road? Next question is, is do you need a bathroom? Uh, how much cooking are you going to need to be doing in the van? Because that really comes down to what appliances are you going to need? What are your energy and electrical requirements and wattage? And we'll get into all that as well. And then the big question is, is how much storage do you need? Are you gonna be staying at campsites? Are you gonna be boondocking? Are you gonna require electrical hookups, plumbing hookups? All these things are critical when establishing how you're gonna do your van build. How tall are you? My wife and I are under six foot. So for us, this was quite easy. We actually decided to go with our bed size. We have a 74 inch bed where a typical bed, a queen size bed is 80 inches long. So all these things make a difference. Then the garage is always underneath the bed. So the question is, is what gear are you going to bring? Are you bringing bikes, kayaks, luggage, fishing? And then do you want to use bike racks or do you want to store all the stuff that's it, when it's in the van? So this way you don't have to worry about somebody stealing your bike. Uh, or things like that. And then lastly, what is the load capacity of the van? And then what is the towing capacity? I think it's important that we start to talk about the different van uh, manufacturers out there, whether you're going to buy new, whether you're going to buy used, and then build it out. So number one, if, if you look at this, depending where you're at, some of these might not be available in the U.S., but some of them um, going to be available overseas, but Renault put out one, Mercedes-Benz has one, uh, Peugeot has one. If you can see the size, you know, this is a 140-inch wheelbase van, and these th same three vans are also listed here, and you can see that they're larger. So this is 170 inches between wheelbase, and when you pick your van, you really need to understand the length of your van. So then when we go further, then you can look at what is um, VW, Volkswagen just came out with, Dodge Ram Pro Master, Ford Transit van. So you really got to start taking all those questions that we started up with and really determining which van is going to be best for you to do your build um, if you decide to do this. And then also, secondarily, when you start looking at other RVs that are already built out there, you'll be able to see what van bodies they're using um, 
but I'm going to get into a lot of that. So the big thing is, is where do we get our ideas? Where do we get our inspiration and how do we become creative? So for me, my recommendation, because this is what I've done. Number one, go to an RV show, go to an RV dealer, start walking through all of the different RVs uh, because you really start to get inspired. And for my wife and I, I hate saying it, but there was no RV out there that was going to fit the requirements that we needed. And for us, because of the size of the van and we built new, um, you know, I probably could have got something cheaper that was already built, but it wouldn't have had half of the stuff that I have in my van. So our options were once we went through a criteria list, that was it. So, so again, go to your RV shows. The other thing here is even on the boats, uh, a lot of my components are coming out of uh, yachts and you'll see that in the photos that I go through. And then secondarily, there is so much information available on YouTube, um, get out there and start doing it. So when we did that, my first idea was I was gonna create this. So my wife thought this was a little bit too high, the wheels are a little bit too big, but again, there's a lot of creativity out there that people will uh, build, but this is this is a van that was built um, and used up in Iceland. So our van goals were the following. We wanted a van that was built for just my wife and I for two people. We wanted the ability to haul our tandem bike, which is this photo right here. We wanted the ability to have four wheel drive so we can drive on the beach and bring all of our comforts from home. And along with that, we needed the ability to store all of this gear. Uh, we do have some mobility issues as we get older in our lives. So we want uh, different modes of transportation depending on where we're going. So for us, we decided this was a trip that we took up in Maine. We wanted to take the tandem bike up there, but when you're going through Bar Harbor, we decided that we also wanted to bring this little mini electric trike. So this way we're not gonna get limited on where we wanna go, whether it's in Bar Harbor, or whether it's through the pads and the uh, carriage trails in uh, Acadia National Park. These, these are some of the goals that you had to do. So for us, we needed this. Um, for us, diesel fuel only. I did not want propane. I did want not LP gas. I wanted a large garage to haul our gear. And I wanted it completely self-contained. I wanted it stealth. I didn't want to have any hookups outside. I, didn't, I wanted it to really look like a work van. I also wanted to make sure that our van was wide enough to fit in parking lots. And even though we went with a longer van, uh, I, it's very difficult to parallel park it. But if you're in a parking lot in a shopping center or something like that, I have no problem parking the van at all. So there's a lot that you really have to think of when you're doing that. Our van goals were also, my wife absolutely wanted a bathroom. She wanted it in self-contained. We have a bathroom, we have a shower. And we'll talk about whether or not you really need a shower or not, depending what your use is going to be with the van. Uh, but but for us, we use that um, bathroom also as a closet. So there is clothes, there's a clothes rod in there and everything else. We also wanted to make sure that our van was something that we could easily reconfigure in the future as our needs change. And we have reconfigured this van and I'll get into all that. The removable bed was extremely important for me. I needed to have a van that I could take the bed out. I came up with this way of putting in a, a bed that I could take in and out of there in 10 minutes and I'm able to haul stuff around and help my friends if they need something. For us, our van, I would say, is an adventure van. It's not just for camping and traveling, even though we do that as well. And the other part was, is I really needed something that was going to be um, something that could be easily serviced, whether I go to a Mercedes Benz dealer or somebody that does foreign cars. But if I wanted to have something fixed on my inverter, my secondary alternator or my, you know, diesel boiler, any of that stuff, I could easily get this thing serviced. What did I pick? 
For me, as I mentioned earlier, we went with the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. This is the 2017 that I went with. And here, as you can see, this one here is a longer wheelbase. So it does extend out further. I did go with the cargo van, so I did not want any windows in here. And I opted to be able to cut my windows out the way that I wanted them. This is what I started with. I needed a four wheel drive and I needed a longer van because I was putting my tandem bike in there and I had a lot of other gear that I needed to carry. When I was really laying out the van, the first thing you want to do is to be able to get a floor diagram. And with this floor diagram, it really will help you understand what your width and dimensions are. The wheel walls are critical. So how do you lay out your bed configuration? How are you going to put your kitchen? And if you decide you want electricity and all this other stuff, you got to lay it all out. We'll get into what the um, what we ended up doing on this. Just a real quick high level overview of my van. When I bought my van, this is what came in it. So it was a 2017 Sprinter 2500 cargo van. So it's a heavy duty van and it, it's got a good load capacity. It's 170 wheelbase. It is a high roof. That's my gross vehicle weight fuel tanks, all this other stuff. The, you know, the interesting thing is I do have in this van a fuel fired preheater. I can schedule in my van to automatically heat my van up in the morning at six o'clock. So I have a secondary diesel boiler, a uh, 17,000 BTU that will actually hit the, heat the cab of the vehicle. And that way, when I come out, I can start it and it's good. The other things that are important here is I do have my four wheel drive, high, low range uh, with down heat spill, uh, downhill speed regulation. There is a lot of safety gear in this van. So this does have the navigation. It does have the sensors, the blind spot um, collision prevention. The other thing that's important to note is my van also has an additional battery. I have two batteries that run the front of the van which is the starting and the stopping. And then in the back of the van, I have in a completely different electrical system uh, that I use in there, it's completely different. So when I open my doors in the back of the van, that does not drain my front, uh, my, my front battery. The two front doors do, but not the back. But you'll, we'll get into all that detail as we, we go through this. Question is, is how do you start, right? It just, for me, I tried to lay things out. I knew I wanted a water tank. I came up with this idea that I was going to have this sliding bike rack that was going to be able to put my tandem bike on it. It, it. it just, I had all the greatest intentions of the world, but as I said in my first slide, the math just didn't work, right? There is a lot of uh, trial and error in this. I've seen some people do this stuff in SketchUp. I'm just not one of those type of guys. So I went out and I built all my framing out of aluminum and I'm able to repurpose this and I used them in other, um, other components, but it's not really the way we thought it would be. So the second thing that we had to do is really understand what my, my electrical consumption was going to be. So since I was not going to be using, I did not want to have a connection at a campground. So I wanted to be 100% self-contained. So I needed to make sure that I uh, put all my requirements together in terms of the wattage that was used. So on Amazon, you can get these very inexpensive power consumption meters. Really, all, also uh, this this is the um, this is the charging system on my tandem bike. So I'm able to plug this into this little meter and it tells me that my requirement for this bike when it's charging my batteries is 71.5 watts. So really now you get to give a good understanding of what your total wattage requirements are. So when you're looking at this, you know, when you're plugging in your hair dryer and your microwaves and you got to ask yourself all those questions you need to understand how many watts of power are you going to need to be able to charge this stuff and again that's depending on whether or not you're going to be stopping at a campground plugging in and then charging your batteries or do you want to be able to charge your batteries when you're driving 
It's all important questions that you have to really lay out before you start your build. These are, these are the items that I wanted to put in my van and three of these bikes here, this, this, these two trikes are all e-bikes. So all these, I do want to have these charging when they're in the van. So I've got to calculate my power consumption out. Talk about the van builds features. What did I put in my van? Um, so I'm going to give you the real high level overview of what I've done. I have three 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries from um, Life Blue. I have, and, and these People over at Life Blue are unbelievable. They helped me out with everything. So there's a lot of resources that I'm going to be giving you out there. My I put in a 4,000 watt Magnum um, energy 4,000 watt inverter slash charger, which allows me then to convert my 300 amp hours of lithium ion batteries into electricity to charge whatever I need, my microwave, my coffee maker, whatever. I also have on my van uh, 200 watts of solar panels, and these are Renegy um, mono uh, crystalline solar panels, 100 watts each. I had originally had four up on there, and you'll see the pictures of the four but I brought this down to 200 watts because I didn't need it. Um, I have a Blue Sky charge controller. We'll get into all that. My secondary alternator, absolute must for me. This one I needed, and again, this is 280 amps. It's got a special voltage regulator, a multi-stage voltage regulator, and this is available from national starters and alternators. And they are the ones that sell all the alternator kits to all the RV companies out there that are doing the conversions. So we'll get into this discussion as well. I have in my system a 17,000 BTU hydronic diesel furnace. I did want to have um, hot water available and I did want to have a, a heating system. And this system I got from Rickson Enterprises and Rickson also is the company that sells all the hydronic um, diesel systems for all the RV companies and everybody goes to them and buys. Uh, all my aluminum cabinet frames, we'll get into this as well. All that is 80-20. If those of you that have never seen it, this is um, T-Strut um, uh, aluminum framing. Uh, this is uh, an adult's version of an erector set. So as a kid, you wanted to tinker with stuff this stuff you can build anything from. And there's so many videos out there and you'll see how I did it and why I did it. You don't need to build aluminum frame cabinets. I just chose to do it that way. Uh, but, and again, this video will still be helpful if you opt not to go with aluminum frame cabinets. So the bathroom, my build features are my bathroom, uh, which I have a shower and a cassette toilet. We'll get into the reasons why I decided to have a cassette toilet. We also have a 20 gallons of fresh water. Uh, and 18 gallons for gray water. We have dual max fans uh, with remotes in the van. So I push a button, if it gets over 78 degrees, the fans automatically turn that on, vents it out. And since I have solar and I have so much lithium ion, it doesn't matter at all. So the vans are, the fans are running whenever they need to do. I have a lot of insulation, uh, vapor barrier. I use Thinsulate 3M throughout the entire van. Um, this van is well insulated as well as I insulated the floors uh, with foam compression and we'll get into that in all the detail. And again, most for, as I mentioned to you before, I can't tell you enough how much I need a garage that transforms. So for us, with the amount of gear that we handle, everything else like that, the beds are easily removable. We have dual swivel seats, two different types of tables, four outlets, which is eight plugins. Our refrigerator freezer is an isotherm that I run all the time. Even when I'm not using my van, my refrigerator is always running in my van and all that runs off of my battery and my solar and my battery levels never drop below 95%. I also have a coffee maker, induction top, microwave. My wife wants to bring her hair dryer, her curling irons, all that stuff. So we've got plenty of electric to do that. We have tons of storage in the van. Uh, air compressor is required when I'm driving on the beach because I do have to lower the pressure in my tires down to 15 pounds. 
and then I want to be able to pump, pump it back up. As I mentioned before, this van is completely self-contained. So if I want to go boondocking, we can do it. It is stealth and there is no outside connections. After three years and 18,000 miles, there's a lot of lessons to be learned on this. And I would say that our van is really designed more for day, weekend, or maybe an occasional week-long adventure trip. We have not gone across the U.S. And to be honest with you, even if we did decide and we will go across the United States, our intention, we just don't feel like being in the van all the time. So we might drive the van out, get to a certain area, go see all the sites, park the van, get into the airplane, fly home, and then pay for storage and then go back out another time, right? So as I mentioned, we are, so our van is day weekend adventures. We love going out to our van. Um, we'll go out and grab dinner. We'll sit down by the bay, watch the sunset, you know, because we have the refrigerator, the bathroom, everything there, it makes it easy. And we do love taking this van to festivals. We go to the balloon festivals. There's a lot of different things. You can go to the, the, the vineyards and just, you know, hang out in the van. We definitely love the four wheel drive for the beach. Um, the garage configuration by far is big for me. We're really happy with the electrical system. And I have to admit, I, I did make a comment to my wife the other day and she wasn't happy about it, but we don't ever sleep in the van we have but it's not something that we do so for us the reason i call it an adventure van is we'll drive it if we get tired we'll take a nap which is great but in the end we still want to be able to go into a hotel if we're driving somewhere along the east coast or something like that and uh, be able to get a real shower instead of a compact shower when you're really only limited to 20 gallons of water. So, but we'll get into all this stuff as we go. I hope you enjoyed what I had to present today. As I said, there will be 20 videos following this. You know, please make any comments in the sections below and I will get back to you on it.